Welcome to the show. Kind of a special 4th of July edition today. We're going to make a USA wall decoration. Uh, it could also be garden art or something like that. Depends on how you want to mount it. We're going to make it out of rebar. So when I started the project, I knew I was going to have to bend rebar, and I didn't want to have to use the forge to do this, because I wanted it to be something that would be more universal type of project. Not everybody has a forge or a way to heat up steel to 2,000 degrees. So I figured the right way to go about it would be to create kind of a jig for bending rebar. Wood is an easy material to work with, and I have plenty of scraps laying around. So that's what I decided to use to make my jig. I cut it out on the scroll saw. You could use a coping saw or really just about any kind of saw if you were patient enough. It doesn't have to be a precise circle or anything, but I figured I'd clean it up on the belt sander and make it look a little nicer. I had a big like four and a half foot piece of two by 12, and I figured that would be substantial enough to work as a base but portable enough that I could move it around if I needed to maneuver things. You know, maybe if I've got a long piece of rebar and I'm trying to bend it and it doesn't fit well in the part of the shop, take it outside or whatever it needed to do. You can see that I put a bolt in there and I kind of tried to gauge the, I tried to gauge the distance using half inch rebar, even though I was using three eighths for the, this project. By the time I was done, it was almost a tight fit with the 3 8 So if, if on a future project I wanted to use this for bending half inch, probably need to find a different spot and put the bolt out another you know quarter of an inch or something. Uh, but honestly, even 3 8 rebar is pretty hard to bend unless you can get some real decent leverage on it. When it comes to actually bending the rebar, the longer the piece that you're using, the more leverage you're going to be able to get and the easier it is to bend. But you also have to be careful because rebar has a tendency, it seems like it, it really wants to just sort of find a weak spot and kind of kink there. So you have to be a little bit deliberate about forcing the rebar around that circle. You can see there I started with the U and then just had to trim it up to the length I wanted. And then I figured I could use the same radius for the S. It would be about right and once you get the basic curves into the rebar you can adjust things as you need to. You can bend them by hand or pounding with the hammer a little bit. Just to kind of tweak things, make it look right. With the A, I decided I didn't want to keep to that same radius. I wanted an A that was more conical in shape. So you can see there, I just started the bend on that bolt and it was still hot from using the grinder on it. So I threw some gloves on and there you can see I can, you know, I'm really getting a lot better leverage working that way. And then finish that off with the hammer too. And then I just had to lay everything out and make sure things look good. Get things trimmed to the right length, get that crossbar on the A, kind of figure out where I wanted to position that and how I wanted it to sit relative to the, to the S. Brought it down a little bit and that looked better. And then laid it out on the concrete and hooked up the welder. And you know, there'd be other ways to fix the letters together. You could use uh, an epoxy. There might be some certain small brackets that you can screw into place. You could also fix all three letters to, uh, to another base of some kind, like to a board behind them or something. But I have a welder, it works fast, and it makes a strong bond. And with the welding done, I wanted to make sure to have a nice clean surface for the paint that I'm gonna do in the next step here. 
So I kind of took that wire brush over the whole surface and just tried to get any rust off of there or any grime. For probably obvious reasons, I chose red, white, and blue spray paint. And I had an old scrap piece of aluminum. So I figured rather than tape off each letter and spray and wait for it to dry and then tape off, I just used that aluminum to kind of mask off as I went. You can see there that that actually worked pretty well. I had a little bit of overspray in a couple of spots, so I just kind of went back in afterward and hit those close up. And that's it. Once the paint is dry, there's only one thing left to do.